After eight years of Trudeau and the NDP, Parliament is back and there will be a stark debate between the common sense Conservatives who will free Canadians to earn powerful paychecks that buy affordable food, gas and homes in safe neighbourhoods. Or Justin Trudeau and the NDP Liberal government who take your money, punish your work, tax your food, double your housing bill, and unleash crime and chaos in your community. Common sense Conservatives have two main priorities. One, reverse the housing hell that Justin Trudeau has caused for Canadians paying mortgages, buying homes, or renting apartments. And two, axing the Trudeau NDP carbon tax to bring down the cost of food, gas, and heat. But let's just review where we are. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, everything costs more. Work doesn't pay. Housing costs have doubled. Rent has doubled. The needed mortgage payment and down payment for a home have doubled. Nine in 10 young people, for the first time ever in our history, say they will never be able to afford a home. Toronto is now the worst housing bubble in the world, according to UBS. Eight years ago, when I was housing minister, it didn't even rank on the list. Vancouver is now the third most overpriced housing market on earth when you compare median home price to median income. Canada has the riskiest mortgage debt of all 40 OECD nations. Home prices in Canada are 50 to 75 percent higher than the United States and in border time, towns they are often three times higher. You can buy a castle in Sweden for the price of a two-bedroom in Kitchener. The, Justin Trudeau has caused this housing hell two ways. One is massive inflationary deficits, not only doubled the debt and added more debt than all prior prime ministers combined, but they've driven up interest rates faster than at any time in monetary history. And that means higher mortgage payments, means more people have to rent and they have to therefore compete for scarce supply of rental properties. Second thing he's done is he's ballooned local bureaucracies who block home building. He gives bigger and fatter checks to local government gatekeepers who have made it so that Canada has the fewest homes per capita of any country in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. Housing should be dirt cheap in Canada. After all, we have the most dirt to build on. My common sense plan gets rid of bureaucracy to build homes. I'll bring in a mathematical formula that gives 1% more funding to a municipality if they beat their housing home building targets by 1%. If they miss their target by 1%, they'll get 1% less money and so on and so forth. I will require they build that they permit 15% more homes per year or they will lose their money. But those that beat the target will get a bonus. 15% a year compounded doubles home construction in five years. They don't have to fill up paperwork for bureaucrats in Ottawa. They just have to get out of the way and let builders build. And if they do, money will appear in their bank account. It's a very simple, organic, mathematical formula that runs itself. With math, not politics. We have a math problem. Not enough houses for the number of humans. How do you fix the math problem? With a mathematical solution. And that's what my common sense plan does. We will bring home lower prices by axing the carbon tax, by getting rid of the inflationary deficits to bring down interest rates and the cost of living. We will make sure people live in safe neighborhoods with jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders and with treatment and not decriminalized or tax funded drugs for those afflicted with addiction. We will bring home the Canada we know and love. Your home, my home, our home, Let's bring it home. Thank you.